Hi there, let's now look at the multiplier, Keynesian multiplier. So far we looked at the uh, circle flow of income and also how we determine the national income uh, given the injections and withdrawals. Now, um, we know that the aggregate expenditure affects the income, but by how much change in aggregate expenditure induces some changes in income? The question is by how much? How much uh, will the income rise or decline? By how much in our words, I should say how much, but it's by how much the the income changes should there be change in our withdrawals or injections. Now the national income appears to rise by more than the rise in J or fall in W. So in other words, a one pound income injected in the economy uh, uh, turns well over time the due to circulation of income leads to a greater amount of income generation apparently so one pound income in the form of sales received by the firm implies income in the form of wages to the uh, uh, to the uh, employees and then their income goes into uh, tax payments savings and and then uh, income also as an income into imported goods as well so, uh, or the or expenditure for imported goods becomes income for other uh, side of the economy obviously so this circle of flow basically creates this multiplier effect in income as a result and the multiplier is calculated you know, by dividing the change in income by the change in J in other words basically it tells us by how much a rise in J causes a change in in, in, in income so that's the multiplier formula we look at two, two, two ways of looking calculating or the two graphical analysis that show us the uh, magnet of multiplier a, sh a shift in the J line and the shift in the W line they both are basically these are two uh, equivalent cases so we look at the injections first and then I think I'll skip the withdrawals because it doesn't really um, make difference here they are quite the same uh, cases now let's start with the case where we are in equilibrium point A where withdrawals equals J and if you remember J is constant doesn't depend on income levels while withdrawals change as our income changes at different income levels abstract from time changes now assume that we are in equilibrium point A given the income level and there is a change in J J if you remember was uh, composed of uh, what was it uh, investments by uh, firms uh, government expenditure and expert expenditure so either company or any of them will change or both or all of them change means basically shift in the J curve basically in, 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 in the economy so that gives us a new uh, curve here J2 or J2 line in this case it's because it's constant it's just a line rather than a curve now that means well uh, there will be a new equilibrium point in the economy that a change in injections leads to a higher income level of e equilibrium that's point e2 now so a small change here induced a greater look, look at this now small change here inducing greater rise in income so uh, also by the way it's it's the same uh, the case of withdrawal changes as well if the withdrawals decline and that gives us exactly the same amount of change in in, in in income as well it's it's a case of j not being here and then just shift w downwards to point c here yeah a new equilibrium appears here and I, that's exactly the same shift downwards here as well or j curve shifting upwards w shifting downwards gives us exactly the same change here and exactly the same income here level as well so the income is an uh, income change here or the increase in income is greater than the increase in j curve here now in terms of formulas if you look at this multiplier formula here it's basically uh, telling us that the, the multiplier is equal to change in y over change in j which is equal to change in y over change in w well in this case the decline in w and and the, the interesting point here is that well this is the simple formula here interesting point is that the multiplier is so take a look at this now yourself so i'm going to skip this these are just a b c points here this is the, it's the calculation of basically gradient in other words yeah c minus a so 
change in income or change in uh, the injections so we'll, we'll move that move on and notice at this point here 1 over mpw the marginal propensity to withdraw well let's look at this where this comes from notice that the change in income here really is 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 dependent on the the gradient of w curve if it's flatter let's say it's it's flatter if we pull it down a bit and then raise this end to upwards you will see that the 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 income rise will be even even higher yeah if say the if if, it, if the w curve is flat i don't have it unfortunately i should have created this scenario as well but that's the case here if this w curve is flatter then obviously income will be even higher in other words flat w implies lower injections yeah no, sorry lower withdrawals lower withdrawals implies higher injections usually so much of the if there is lower uh, withdrawal not injections more consumption i should say so as a result income effect will be higher of this change in uh, j here so uh, ultimately the multiplier appears to depend on the gradient here and then if you remember gradient here is rise over run yeah so rise here is basically changing j run here is basically changing y and that is the gradient but then multiplier is basically run over rise so it's it turns out the multiplier is the reciprocal of or inverse of the marginal propensity to withdraw yeah that's the that's why we have the multiplier being equal to the one over mpw here so basically this mpc mpw is is basically proportion of uh, income uh, from uh, from the household that is being that's being uh, withdrawn from the economy smaller of this value the higher the uh, multiplier here so smaller the withdrawals higher the multiplier keep that in mind okay now this is the shift in withdrawals uh, case here it will give us exactly the same result i'm not going to um, explain this here take a look at this in it, it's in the slides i'm gonna go quickly to the uh, the next uh, slides about the expenditure and income approach which gives us even better uh, a perspective so alternative formulation of the multiplier uh, so let's look at the, uh, the, the this formula here npcd that's marginal propensity to consume domestic goods plus marginal propensity to propensity to withdraw is equal to one basically this is just an identity of what we have so far learned basically income of a household or national income is equal to uh, what we said consumption of domestic goods plus the withdrawals right and if you express them in terms of fractions marginal propensity to, to, to consume is basically proportion of income spent on consumption plus proportion of income spent on withdrawals equal to one and if you do a bit of manipulation here so that gives us mpw equals one minus mpcd yeah and remember that uh, the multiplier k well in this case it's k uh, or the multiplier is equal to one over mpw yeah inverse of the marginal marginal propensity to, propensity to, to withdraw so replace this with this identity here that gives us one over one minus mpcd so if you know marginal propensity if you know the value of marginal propensity to, to consume or the fraction of income uh, uh, increase in consumption due to increase in income that's the case here so that's the definition of marginal propensity to consume um, if you know this value then obviously you are able to uh, calculate the, uh, the, uh, the multiplier and the way we calculate the mpct is basically change in consumption over change in y here it is here's an example let's look at this now again the y-axis we have all these monetary units consumption expenditure wj all in billions and then gdp that's national income now this is our y remember this is 45 degree line and our expenditure here that's our aggregate expenditure e1 they will be e2 as well soon that's why it's subscript one you see that's our um, equilibrium point that's equilibrium at that point at least assume that we have 100 billion income and a consumption of 100 you remember this is basically gdp uh, was uh, consumption plus withdrawals well and also 
this, this because the GCP is constant withdrawals, it's mapped. GCP is mapped on the y-axis again. That gives us the uh, identity or the one-to-one uh, -one mapping, 45 degree line. Yeah. So 100 to 100. Now, if you remember, we also had the consumption line, which is lower than the expenditure line here. Expenditure line here is basically uh, uh, made up of consumption and then the uh, injections. Yeah. So that's the expenditure line. We, we need this line for a later calculation. Keep that in mind for now. Now let's assume that J increases, the injections increase. Injections, if you remember, was part of E1. Yeah. So because E1 was CD plus injections, that E1 will now change or the, it will be a new e, e curve, the expenditure curve. This is a parallel shift by J amount. And that gives us a new level of injection. So that's basically injections increased our expenditure by just 20 billion pounds. But how much was the in change in income, equilibrium income now? Well, now the equilibrium income is uh, determined at this point now where the uh, uh, income is equal to aggregate uh, expenditure. What's this? The rise in income due to this 20 billion increase in ex injections is basically 60 billion. Yeah. So the the, the income rose three times. Uh, yeah. Given the 20 20 billion increase in the in the uh, in the injections, and notice also that from the original consumption level for this equilibrium point, now our consumption increased due to this injection by 40 billion. Yeah. Uh, so income here as well 60 billion and the same here 60 billion so 160 minus 100 gives us 60 billion here and 60 billion here as well so the, the formula for multiplier or the value of multiply is change in y 60 that's the difference between here or the difference between these two points over the, the injections change in injections is 120 minus 100 that gives us 3 so income uh, basically a pound of uh, a pound of uh, injections or expenditure brought in three times more income as as the as this in injection circulate the economy. Now let's look at the, uh, the another way of looking at the multiplier effect using the MPC uh, D formula. If you remember, MPC D was changing uh, consumption due to change in income. Yeah, that's from the formula there. I don't want to go back now, but this is change in consumption over change in income. So that's change in consumption here, 40, change in income here, 60. That gives us two thirds. And also remember that uh, MPW, which was marginal properties to withdraw, was 1 minus MPCD, which is then 1 minus 2.2, 2 over 3, giving us 1 over 3. And the formula for multiplier if, uh, was then. 1 over 1 minus MPCD. This is in brackets, by the way, which is 1 over 1 over 3. Uh, that gives us 3 again. So either way, both methods, whether using the simple uh, method here, looking at the changes, or using the MPCD method, gives us exactly the same result. No. Okay, so a pound of increase in in injections leads us three times more income basically it gives us three times more income given the money circulates as income from uh, from uh, producers to households from household to producers again and back and forth now just a quick question here if a rise in, in national income of 100 million causes consumption of domestic goods and services to rise by 60 million well the multiplier is then pause here and then calculate it it's very simple well, the answer is C here, 2.5. Use the formula that we have just so far learned. Okay, I'll stop here at this point. It's the end of the multiplier uh, video, or Keynesian multiplier videos.